Hey, this is Joe from Personas. In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of recording your first song in Studio One. You're going to need a couple of things to get started. First, you need to have Studio One installed. I'll be using Studio One Professional. If you don't have Studio One installed or you need some help with that, we have a video on how to set up and install Studio One. Check that out before you continue. The next thing you'll need is an audio interface. Uh, we've got a video on how to set up your audio interface if that's giving you trouble. Uh, but today I will be using the AudioBox Go from Personas. It's one of our newer interfaces. It's super cute, tiny, portable. You can see it just over my shoulder over there just hanging out and being all cute. You'll also need a microphone for this challenge. I've chosen the Personas PX1 large diaphragm condenser mic. And finally, you'll need headphones. I'll be using the Personas HD9s. Okay, let's dive in. I'm gonna go step by step through this process. The first thing we wanna do is open Studio One and double check here that our audio interface is selected. You can see the picture there, audio box go. We can say, yes, that is selected. We have the device block size set to 128. You don't have to understand that, just set it to there and you'll be good to go. Next, we'll click New Song. We'll type in the title here, My First Song. We'll just choose Empty Song as our template. These are the settings that I would use. Just click OK. This is a blank song in Studio One. We first need a track to record our guitar to. We click on Track, Add Tracks. We can name the track here, something clever like, I don't know, Guitar. And then we can also choose our color and also our input. I'll be using input one on the audio box go. That's the input that I have my microphone plugged into. We click OK, and now we have a guitar track to which we can record the guitar. Next, we need to set up our microphone for the guitar. I like to use what I'll call the 12 and 12 method. Grab the microphone, set it up about 12 inches away from the guitar, point it at the 12th fret. It's a great starting point. Next, we connect a microphone cable into the microphone and the other end into channel one on our interface. Since this is a condenser microphone, we need to press the 48V phantom power button to power up the microphone so we can have signal. Put on your headphones and plug them into the headphone jack. Turn it up about halfway. You can always turn it up or down later as needed. Back in Studio One, we're ready to record enable this track. We just press the record button and now we should see some signal coming from the microphone. Next, we need to set the level of the microphone. It's as simple as turning up the volume knob for channel one on the interface and making sure that that level meter isn't going too high. If this is 10 and this is zero, I say have the meter somewhere between five and seven. Okay, now you're ready to record guitar. As nerve-wracking as it might seem, it really is as simple as pushing the red record button and play it until you get it right. Sometimes I'll have several false starts before I finally feel right about the performance and then I play the song from start to finish.
great, we've got our guitar recorded. Now we need to record vocals. First thing we're going to do is disengage the record enable button on the guitar track. We're done with that one. Next, we right click on the track and choose duplicate track. This creates a copy of that track with all the same settings but no audio. I can rename this to vocal. I can change the color because vocals like to be yellow, and I can record enable this track to prepare myself for the vocal recording. When I record vocals, I like to use a pop filter. You can place this right in front of the microphone and it prevents bursts of air from my mouth from hitting the microphone. However, if you don't have a pop filter, no worries, you can still record vocals. Just take the microphone and instead of putting it directly in front of your face, just move it off to the side by about 45 degrees and have it pointing at your mouth. Right now, the microphone is here. You can hear me just fine. Nice quality vocal. I could even blow and it doesn't get picked up by the microphone. The air doesn't hit the mic. So if you don't have a pop filter, don't let that keep you from recording your vocal. When it comes to setting levels on the vocal, same process as with the acoustic guitar. You want that little meter to be visible. You want it to go about halfway to two thirds of the way up the meter without clipping. Clipping is when it gets to the very top and that red light goes off. It can sound bad and it's a bad practice. So go conservative with your levels and you'll be good to go. Always thought that I was invincible Always talked my way out of trouble Mama, she warned me Mama, she warned me What if it's all in my head And I'm not falling over the edge Would you catch me if I fall? Would you notice if I'm Now that you've recorded your song, let me show you how to export it so you can share it with somebody else. First thing you might want to do is open up the mixer. Click the mix button and this will give you access to faders for each of the channels. Maybe the vocal needs to be a little bit quieter than the guitar or maybe the guitar needs to be turned up a little bit. We can do that here and get those levels right. Always thought that I was invincible Now we need to tell Studio One where the song begins and where it ends. We do this with markers. Click on this little window here and choose Marker to open the marker track. Now you'll see a blue flag labeled Start. Drag this to the start of your song. Next, find the end marker and drag that to the appropriate place for the end of your song. Okay, it's time to export the song. First, click on Song and choose Export Mix Down. Next, give the song a file name or a song title. Below that, we can choose what type of file format we want to export. I'm going to go with MP3 here. So I deselect WAV file, choose MP3, and make sure you choose 320 kbps. Next, we tell it to export between the song start and end markers, and then we choose OK. In a matter of moments, we now have an MP3 of our first song that we can listen to, email to friends, play in the car. As I'm sure you can imagine, what I showed you today is kind of the bare essentials of recording and mixing music. There's a lot more that we can do on top of what we did today. Uh, but even what I showed you today may feel a little bit overwhelming for you if you've never done this before, and that's completely normal and it's totally okay. Watch this video again and follow along with me on your system and do all the steps that I showed you. Once you get comfortable with that, you can start adding all the many different elements that we can add to this process to customize it and make it even better. But with every step comes a, an added layer of complexity and things that you need to learn. And it can seem overwhelming. That's why we've created so many resources here on our channel to help you learn the process. We want to meet you where you are and then help you get better and better 
and better at recording and mixing and releasing your music. Hope this was helpful for you. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe so that we can continue to help you in your music journey. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.